Greetings to you all. It's really such a privilege to be preaching the word of God to you once again. 2023, we've made it. Isn't God good? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for revelation knowledge. And we ask that you would impart something so powerful into our hearts today. Father, we ask that you would take us places in 2023. Come and do what only you can do, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm really expectant this year. God has blessed us with our own property as a church. We will be moving into it in the next couple of months. We're just erecting, we're going to be erecting very soon a permanent, a semi-permanent structure on that piece of property. In the meanwhile, we are meeting as combined congregations, the Joburg congregation and the Centurion congregation. We're coming together as one congregation and we are meeting in the Bondev Hall at the Royal Elephant Hotel in Centurion. And uh, that's also really awesome. People I love dearly all coming together and worshiping together. So if you don't meet us in person, I'm telling you, you are missing out. Some of those services are so powerful. The worship, the songs, the ministry, it's, it's just at another level. And I believe that it's going to grow in terms of levels of glory uh, this year. So I encourage you to join us if that's possible. So I want to start a mini series and I want to talk to you today about building God's way, building God's way. I believe that this is going to be a year of building. It will be a year of other things, but it will be a year of building. And we are called as believers to be builders. All of us are in the construction industry. See, the difference between us lies in what we are building and how we are building. You see, you are building something whether you like it or not. The key question is, are you building by design or are you building by default? Who's building into your life right now? Who's building into your children's lives right now? When we explore Jesus' life and his teachings, there's a lot he actually says about building. In scripture, we learn that we've been called to build carefully and with great wisdom. The Bible teaches that it's with wisdom that a house is built. And this shows us that the building material that we use is of paramount importance. It's so crucial, right? And it actually determines the quality of what we end up building. Two people can be doing the same activity, but building different things. Have you noticed that? You see, one can be building a name for themselves, whilst another is building the kingdom of God, but the activity is the same. What are you going to be building this year? God has called us to be builders. What are you building this year? Building occurs, this is so important, building occurs beyond the material things. It it occurs beyond physical buildings and the natural realm. You know, strongholds in one's mind can be erected and built up. Prayer altars in homes can be built up. Spiritual authority in a region can be built up through your disposition and your labor in the things of God. Roots of bitterness can be built up by default, when we don't forgive, when we don't release people and we remain resentful, we are building. So building is not limited to physical and natural things. This is so important. A key thing to also ask is, with whom are you building? With what materials are you building? Often when we build a nice new house, we talk about how, oh, the finishings were really great, right? They built that house with great material. With what materials are you building? We build with our words. We build with our thoughts. We build with how we react or respond to situations. So these and many other questions will be explored over the next couple of weeks as we endeavor to build God's way. And in today's message, we'll explore six dimensions of the technology of building God's way. The first thing I want to share with you in the technology of building God's way is, number one, we are called to build with great care. We, we are called to carefully consider how we build. Remember I said to you earlier on, you are building either by design or by default, but you are building. You see, when God created us, he was building us, wasn't he? But when he created us, he did so with great care. That's why scripture tells us that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. What does that mean? 
He didn't make us into these clones and just say, oh, okay, cool, 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 you know, mass production. No, he did it carefully. He thought through, what is this person's purpose going to be? Let me design them and fashion them accordingly. And we see that in Psalm 139, don't we? And so this sets a pattern for us when it comes to how we build. We are also supposed to take great care when we build. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15, it says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. So we see three things there already, okay? That we are builders, right? And that you can be a wise builder or you can be a foolish builder, right? Someone else can build on what you've built on. So very often we're building together with someone else, with other people. So we must be careful with whom we build because that often determines the result. And it goes on to say, but each one should build with care. So we're doing it together, but we should be doing it with care. Are you building with care? Verse 11, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Verse 14, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. So this passage is showing us a number of things. The first thing it's showing us is that wise builders lay foundations first. Simple as that. A wise builder focuses on the foundation first. We also learn that we must build with great care. We also learn that you can have more than one person building the same entity. So with whom are you building? Critical question. We also learn from the scripture that it's important to examine what resources we use to build. Are you building with gold, with silver, with hay, with straw? What are you building with? We also learn from the scripture that we are accountable for how we have built. We are accountable and we'll receive rewards based on how we have built. One of the things I've learned about building is that building is a process. It's a process. You can't put on a second coat of paint before the first one dries. And sometimes I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Let's make it happen quickly. Right? But the painter will say, I have to first press pause a bit. I have to wait until the first coat has dried. Sometimes they might say like, you know what, there was different color painting under this. So I'm going to need three coats. And if you're impatient, you don't end up with a nice thing afterwards because you've cut corners. Often I just want painters to start painting, but I have to pay them for the time they spend doing the preparation. They'll talk about the prep work. And often it first looks ugly when they're doing that prep work when they are fixing up the wall. But it's necessary if the painting is going to be successful. You see, and this is what we avoid. We avoid the ugly parts when it comes to building. Yet after a few months, we're the ones who are complaining about the damp, you know, in the walls. This is what my kids have been saying about their haircuts when they do a restart. You know, they say, trust the process. I'm like, how come you've cut your hair off? How come, what, what's happening? Trust the process. Right? There's also what people say when a football team gets a new manager and uh, starts to rebuild. Trust the process. Don't fire your manager prematurely. And we've seen this recently with Arsenal. I'm not an Arsenal fan, just to say. But it's been impressive what they've done with Mikel Arteta. They weren't performing well. They weren't playing well uh, last season or so. They were struggling. And people thought, why don't they just fire this guy? We would understand if they fire this guy. But trust the process. Trust the rebuild. And I believe that to be a wise master builder, it's so important. And now what's happening? They're experiencing the rewards of having trusted their manager and they're at the top of the league at the moment. Right? Might not remain that way, but they're at the top of the league at the moment. Right? So building is a process. And a wise builder understands it's a process and needs to be patient. The second thing I want to highlight today about the technology of building is that people are buildings. People are buildings. If you want to be a builder of people, you have to see people as actual buildings. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it says, For we are, God, we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. That's how Paul the Apostle saw these people. Hey, you are actually God's field. 
you are actually God's building. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together. Who's that building? It's us. And rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. That's us. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So we are being built up individually and collectively. And you see, this is a year of building people individually, but also building community. God wants us to be built up together. As we build up individuals, we must make sure we are also building them together. You know, there's some families with successful individuals, but they're not united. There are many couples that got divorced, their marriages failed, but as individuals, they were successful. But they were not being built up together. And I believe it's a year of building where we need to be building and growing together. This is so crucial. You see, there are things you can build. You can build a community, not just individuals. Right? You can build a community. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. So he was affirming them for the fact that they were building people. They were building them up, right? One of the primary ways of building people is through encouragement. Do you make it your goal to be an encouragement in all your interactions with people? The Bible speaks of how prophecy plays a role in edifying people. It says prophecy is for edification. What is to edify? It's to build up. Their spiritual gifts that God gives us in order to build up others. You are called to be a builder. I'm called to be a builder. And we've got so many opportunities to be building individuals, but at the same time also building a strong community. People are a building. They become a building. As a community, we become a building that's built up on proper foundations. This is so important. The third thing I want to share with you with regards to the technology of building is that We must allow God to build through us. So important. We must allow God to build through us. In the book of Psalms 127 verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. And this occurs when we build in faith and not in fear. See, there are people that are uh, very active but not productive. Their building is driven by fear. They get into business deals and they build business empires based on fear and not on faith. And I believe that God wants us to trust him. God wants us to know that, you know what, he's the one who will make this building grow. He's the one who makes this church grow. He's the one who makes your family grow and develop. So allow him to use you to build, but make sure that he's the source. And this is critical. Who is building your business right now? Is it you in your, with your own intellect, with your own wisdom? Or are you allowing God to grow it? Are you allowing God to supernaturally develop it? I don't know about you, but I've had to trust God. I've had to trust God in my business and in what I do professionally, all right, ever since I started. And it's so important that we trust God to do the building and then he grows things uh, supernaturally. The fourth thing I want to share with you with regards to the technology of building is that wisdom builds whilst foolishness tears down. If you look in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, it says, The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. Oh, that's powerful. Ladies, women, you've got the power to build up your house or to tear it down. You are powerful, according to this scripture. At any given moment, you are either building up or tearing down. Simple as that. Every act of foolishness results in something being torn down. Whether it is your family being torn down or your business being torn down or even the church being torn down. And we have a choice to build up or to tear down. I always say to my children, your sense of humor must be used to build up people, not to tear them down. Right? We see in the scripture that you have the power to build or tear down your family. And by the way, when it talks about her house, right, in Hebrew, the word for house and family 
it's, it's, it's the same word, right? And so house is not always talking about a physical thing when you see it, that, see that word, but it speaks of family, right? So each word, each response, every action of yours is either building up or tearing down your family, your church, the people around you. The fifth thing I want to share with you with regards to the technology of building is that we are called to tear down before we can rebuild. You see, there is actually a type of tearing down that is God-ordained. Builders have to be skilled at demolishing things. When I was growing up, my dad did a lot of renovations on our house. I grew up with the sound of tearing down. It just literally became the norm for a number of years. Despite this, I was amazed by what was then built up. See, a lot of people don't fully transform their homes when they're renovating because they're afraid of tearing down certain things. Now, Jeremiah the prophet was called to do this. There's a God-ordained tearing down that we have to do before we can build up. In Jeremiah 1 verse 10, it says, See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Why does the building and planting come later at the end? Because you first have to destroy certain things before you can build certain things. Are you trying to build on ground that is not level? My friend who's a land surveyor, Mr. Manyuma, many of you know him, he explained to me the importance of preparing the land before you build, right? As a builder, what has God called you to tear down and destroy, even in people, before you can actually build? What have you been called to rebuild in your life? There's building and then there's rebuilding. And a lot of what we're doing is rebuilding. That's why we called our discipleship book Rebuild, because that's what we're doing, right? Uh, sometimes I say to people in the workplace, I say to them, you know what, sometimes what you're doing as a leader at work is a reparenting process because there are a lot of people who aren't parenting, parented properly and you're reparenting them. So there are things to uproot and things to destroy even in our minds as part of the building process. Part of the mind renewal process is also demolishing arguments, things that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 6, it says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Right? So to be a great builder, I also need to be a great destroyer. I need to learn how to demolish certain things. What have you been called to demolish? What have you been called to destroy? Think of some of the people in scripture where God would literally say to them, listen, you need to destroy those idols. You need to destroy those idols in your father's house. And they would have to go. I mean, think of Gideon as an example of that. He had to do that before he could experience the victory. And then finally, the sixth dimension of the technology of building that I want to share with you today is that wise people build on the correct foundation. Wise people build on the correct foundation. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through to 27, this is what Jesus says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them in practice, into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. On what foundation are you building? Are you building on gifting and not character? That's the wrong way around. Some people go for dessert before the main meal. You know, I've experienced that before. I'm at a workshop or somewhere, everyone is going for the main course, and then someone says, you know what, I'm going for the best part first, dessert. Okay, that's the wrong way around. Many of us are good at training to build our competence or our skills, but few of us invest in character development. 
Sometimes that's seen as boring, right? In building, your foundation must be aligned with the size of the building and the environment. Not so, right? If you're building a tall skyscraper, you need a deeper foundation. The higher the building, the taller the building, the deeper the foundation you need. And one of the problems we see today is that there are a lot of people who've got faulty and shaky foundations. They've got a foundation, right? But it's not matching their assignment in their life. And then they experience a ticking time bomb. You know when you've got a character flaw in your foundations? It's like a ticking time bomb. Tick, tick, tick. And one day it collapses. Your life collapses. Your assignment collapses. You fall. And a lot of times when this happens, people will say, you know what? I need to rebuild my foundations. There was obviously a problem. I remember one person I was pastoring saying that, Paul, Paul, Pastor Paul, there was probably a problem in my foundations. And they started working on their foundations once again after they had fallen, right? So in building your foundation must be aligned with the size of the building and the environment you're in. What do I mean by the environment? Well, those of us living in Centurion, we often need to use raft foundations because of the dolomite. There's dolomite in many parts of um, the soil here in Centurion, right? And it causes sinkholes, etc. Some people who are more knowledgeable about these things than I am say that the biggest concern for any structural engineer when building on dolomite is the potential of sinkholes. And we've seen that here in Centurion, where roads are stopped, they're blocked up, and you can't use them for a long time because of the complications of the dolomite. Dolomite can be soluble. Rainwater and uh, percolating groundwater can gradually dissolve the dolomite over time as it seeps through joints, fractures, and fault zones in the rock. There's a guy called Kim Tim, a structural engineer, and he says that with dolomite, there's often a massive amount of variation in the bedrock. It will, for example, be just below the surface on uh, one part of the site and then actually fall away to 50 meters below the ground, just a few meters away. And this is challenging as it is difficult to apply a uniform approach to foundations. And that's what we're dealing with often as pastors, where you see that someone is very strong in one area, but very weak in another area. And it's very difficult sometimes when we're teaching on foundations, we feel like, you know what, this person has heard this before, right? Then we teach something else and they've never heard of it before. So we need to be teaching systematically, but also aware of the fact that some people are strong in one aspect of their foundations and weak in others. A lot of people fail to fulfill their purpose because their foundations were faulty. Often they have foundations, but these foundations are too weak to carry the load of their assignment in life. It's so important to start with the foundation. Foundations don't look pretty. We don't typically show off foundations, do we? Hey, come and look at the foundation, how beautiful it looks. You know, we like to show off uh, the roof maybe, right? Or the color or the design of the building or the windows, you know? Um, but we don't typically show off the foundations. And as pastors and teachers, we still need to teach and ground people in the correct foundations before we tickle their ears with fancy things. You know, you don't hear of people saying they will start off with the roof or the windows when they're building. We have to have the correct foundation. We have to have the correct foundation. And you know, this scripture actually shows that the correct foundation is building on the word of God, right? When Jesus talks about the man who built on rock, and then the other person who built on sand, right? It's building on the word of God and then being a doer of the word, not merely a hearer. So resolve in your heart this year that this is how you're going to build. I'm going to build on the word. And where there are gaps in your biblical knowledge, develop a plan to fill those gaps. Building always has a process. You can't do certain things before you've done other things. It's so important. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 to 2, it says, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal, eternal judgment. So those are foundations. 
But let me ask you a question. How many of you can say, Paul, I can get up and I can articulate to you how eternal judgment will take place? I can talk to you about the resurrection of the dead. I understand the technology of the laying on of hands. How many of you can get up and say that? So God is calling us to a place where we are able to articulate these foundations. Again, very crucial. In Ephesians 4, 14, it says, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. You see, one of the signs of infancy in your walk with the Lord is lack of grounding in strong doctrinal foundations. And that's why this year, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we believe and why. It's so important that as a believer, you know what you believe and why. What we believe and why around certain things that we call contemporary era, where people are moving away from the truth today. We want to articulate it so that you're grounded doctrinally with strong foundations and we teach you how to obey those things. That's what Jesus said. He says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey, teaching them to obey. And that's what we mean by building your house on Christ, who's our rock. May God help us to apply these six principles, these six dimensions of the technology of building as we build his way and his way alone. Let's pray. Father, we commit ourselves to you and we ask for your help. Lord, we want to build your way. Even the things, Lord, that don't sound fancy, even the things that look a bit ugly and mundane. Lord, we want to build in those areas. We want to go through the process. We want to trust the process, Lord. We ask that you come in, come into our church, come into the body of Christ, Lord God, and raise up men and women of God who will teach foundations once again, who will set people straight, aligned with your word. Father, we pray that you would help us to carefully consider how we are building and with whom we are building and with what we are building. Please help us, God. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.